gates machine. It is the space of overturning. It is the space of the migrant. We can illustrate this by comparing these experiences of site space to the experiences of the desert. For the nomad, the desert is a haptic space. That is to say, it is ruled by tactile qualities rather than by lines of sight. There is no line separating our earth and sky. There is no intermediate distance, no perspective or contour. Visibility is limited, and yet there is an extra, extraordinarily fine topology that relies not on points or objects, but rather on on sets of relations, winds, undulations of sound, the song of the sound, and its tactile qualities. Everything about the nomad space is like that localized and not limited. The nomad is situated in uh, what you might call a local absolute. Everything is manifested locally and engendered in a series of local operations of varying orientations. By contrast, the space of the master computer and the desert of religion is extremely visual. Um, yeah, the CD player suggestion is pretty much one I was going to make as well, and start producing some media, and that seems to be the nearest thing that one that I could suggest. Um, yeah, this is what really troubled me when I was writing my paper, actually, um, because um, what really worries me whenever I'm trying to write a piece of analysis, but, but it's always a total waste of time, but, but what I should be doing is spending my time thinking about strategies, but I'm really terrible at that. Um, I don't know. I, mean, I, I think that the, 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 the uh, producing media is one option, um, and it's also a good one, especially with things like, uh, we're going to keep this in the area of the net, real video seems to be a good opportunity to get out and have the next six months and make some pirate TV, after that it'll be dead, but if you can do it really fast and really well, then uh, probably catch that wave. Um, yeah, that would be quite a good one. Um, <coughs> That's about it, really. <laughs> Is there a way of chipping into the broadcasting things once the digital TV starts? Yeah, satellite hacks. Uh, yeah, you satellite hacks really appeal to me. I don't know how to do that. But well, the well, people doing that. Well, you can capture satellite broadcasts on the uplink where it's being bounced from the remote location to the satellite before it goes back to the base. I mean, there's um, an American filmmaker uh, who's quite well known for doing that, whose name has temporarily escaped me. Brian Springer. Brian Springer, thank you. Um, and uh, that's that's an interesting way of hacking hacking TV broadcasts. I mean, he, he's made films um, during the US presidential campaign a, a few years ago. Um, and because the, the satellite is feeding all the time, even when the people in front of the, the camera think they're off air, you get some extraordinary candid moments when the the various politicians actually drop their guard and you, you see how constructed the whole political process is and I think that, that's a, a classic media hack and it's something that we should hopefully see if we can exploit more. There's a part in the industry in um, Amsterdam at the moment. He, he's dropping. In Amsterdam at the moment. I saw it, saw it last year, yeah, live. In a room smaller yeah, than this, about half the size of that room. Like, Yeah. So the best story there, uh, they 
is a illustration uh, based on the CATB on target access. But uh, as for concerning radio, uh, that is uh, completely pirate and illegal. Maybe, do you think you could talk a little bit, just mention this paper a little bit about mini FM? very different from European society because uh, Japanese law of uh, frequency of uh, broadcasting is very rigid. The, we cannot use the high power transmitter and we can use only a transmitter which can cast only one kilometer according to the law. So it's very unlogical. But on the other hand, uh, we can get another possibility uh, to connect a small, very small station uh, whose transmitter is very, very small and uh, low power, but uh, we can connect and we can make some network between the very small station. It's uh, uh, our strat it was our strategy or tactic in the middle 80s. Radio to fill the dead air time. Um, there are there are some people in London called Face FM um, at the moment who are experiment who are an old time London pirate in the classic mode. You know, it's it's jungle all through the week and then it's house music on on Saturday nights. But they've um, they've recently hooked up with some Americans and uh, they've uh, they're they're starting to experiment with uh, transmission via ISDN lines and using the web. Uh, and to make them an international pirate station, still with the, the same ethos. Uh, and I believe that their strategy is going to be live broadcast over over a website and uh, with, the, with the whole lot dumped to a digital format and then rebroadcast the next day um, uh, on via traditional radio broadcast. Um, and uh, about the, one of them even claims that they, they're attempting to be the first the first national pirate. I mean, apparently, apparently a good tactic if you want to set up a pirate radio station is find a BBC frequency, because the BBC uh, maintain frequencies uh, all over the country, but only will use them for one region. So uh, if you can find, if you can sit on a BBC frequency in a particular region that they're not using, they can't actually block you, because uh, they they would they would risk blocking their own their own programs. So um, nestle as close to the the sort of host host media as, as you possibly can <laughs> okay, it's interesting for me because uh, the, there were historically speaking there were two types of pirates the one pirate has one pirate is completely illegal another pirate has some commission of paper uh, granted by nation or uh, political power or political states. And in now, uh, for example, middle 80s, in France, Paris, the, uh, before 80, 80s, there were very many illegal stations, radio, Paris radio stations in Paris. But uh, after the uh, France of Mitter Conqueror won the, the, in his election, uh, he legalized and normalized these pirate radio stations. The pirate radio stations were completely normalized and uh, legalized. <laughs> it's uh, these uh, two types of pirate radio stations in the 80s, 80s, the 80s. Uh, one, one thing that occurs to me is, is that um, the, the, act, the act of um, resistance piratical resistance that would be interesting now would probably not be against government, but against capital in its basic structure. So that uh, um, these uh, ways of, of getting by um, local broadcasting laws, it's, it's, uh, it's fun, but it's sort of like uh, engaging with a straw giant to, a certain, to the extent that 
Um, <clears throat> the the, uh, the nation state is, is losing its definition and losing its power vis-a-vis -vis the entire, the, the totality, which is capital. So that, um, you know, pirate radio is, is great. I love it. I do, you know, just we got, I got one right across the street from me in New York, so I'm over there a lot. And uh, it's called Steal This Radio. <laughs> and uh, um, and it's, it's certainly a lot of fun. And you actually can say things on there. It's, it's gratifying for me. The first thing I did was try to remember as many of the seven deadly words, you know, the ones that the FCC won't let you say, like motherfucker and cockroach. Um, <laughs> uh, shit. Uh, and four others. Uh, um, is that right? Yeah. Um, uh, take the piss out. But that's a criticism that it sounds very weird in America, actually. Um, uh, but um, the interesting thing that's happening with the steal this radio radio thing, and also the one in Berkeley, is that the state hasn't closed it down. I mean, there's an article in the New York Times uh, which actually practically gave the address of this place, and I was really worried because the station is in a squat, and some squats have definitely been crushed by the police lately in New York. That is, in fact, literally crushed uh, with a big ball and hammer thing. And uh, so I thought, when the story about the radio appeared in the New York Times, I thought, oh shit, we're gonna have tanks in, in, on my block, you know? Uh, but it didn't happen. So I'm wondering, <coughs> you know, just what, how much of an engagement uh, pirate media is, because it's completely recuperable by capital, to the extent that there can always be a channel uh, for the most dissident lifestyle that you can possibly imagine. You wanna dress like, uh, Pirate, go ahead. That's like a pirate. In fact, we have a whole outfit ready to sell to you, you know. And um, uh, so I think we need new, a new concept of piracy, which will turn against capital, which was, in fact, already one of the origins of capital, was piracy. So there's a, you know, there, as I've been thinking a lot about Blake because I'm staying in Lambeth, and he said that every everything has its form and its spectrum. <coughs> which I suppose you could say uh, dialectically would, would be, you know, it's, it's positive and 